And this video was sponsored by CuriosityStream in partnership with my streaming service, Nebula. CarPay has now built not one, not two, but three phone brands. Yes, I count Nord as its own phone brand, and I'll explain in a little bit why, but these three launches have shown us a pattern, a repeatable and repeated strategy that he uses to build brands out of nothing. In this video, we will explore how his strategy works and why it is so controversial, but still so successful. If you are a phone nerd and old enough, you will have vivid memories of Carl launching his first ever smartphone brand in 2013, OnePlus. We're also in the middle of his new brand, Nothing, launching their first ever smartphone now. And I would argue that the OnePlus Nord was originally launched as a kind of independent brand with Carl's signature brand building strategy as well. Now, after Carl left OnePlus, the Nord brand got deprioritized and was rolled into the now very busy portfolio of OnePlus that I think even their own product managers can probably not keep apart anymore. But when it launched in 2020, it was clearly positioned as a fresh new start with its own brand identity, its own brand colors, separate social media pages, and a separate website, etc. So we'll include that launch in here as well. So in my books, Carl has actually executed the strategy that I'll be breaking down now three times already, and here's how it works. Step one, announce not a phone, but first a supposed problem with the industry. When the OnePlus One launched, their early campaigns were all about how all the other Android phone makers sucked and how none of them made any good phones, like, at all. And to really drive this idea home, they even made people smash their existing phones for a chance to get whatever OnePlus would launch instead. When the Nord launched, they specifically called out themselves, basically saying that they gave up on making affordable flagship killers and made whole documentaries showing that this was a struggle. And with nothing, Carl held a whole 20 minute plus launch event, in air quotes, just going on about how innovation is dead and how none of the phone makers ever do anything interesting anymore. Consumer tech, how do we let it get so boring? We're here to change this, but today, all that excitement and all that possibility around tech, it's gone. And what have we got instead? Skepticism, apathy. Tech companies aren't on the consumer side anymore, and no one's innovating. In fact, this sentiment is still kind of in Carl's Twitter bio. Let's make tech fun again, because currently it isn't. And all three of these campaigns ran for multiple months before the companies gave any details of their own products so that these messages of discontent had time to sink in on their own and to engrave themselves into our brains. Now, notice that these three statements don't actually have to be fully true, and they're also kind of hypocritical coming from Carl. I mean, OnePlus saying that traditional phone brands don't innovate while being launched by Oppo, a traditional phone brand, or the Nord launch being sad about flagship killers being dead, when OnePlus and presumably Carl were the ones who actually killed their own flagship killer strategy, or the Nothing launch event saying that phone brands haven't innovated in the last decade or so when Carl and his team ran a phone brand for that same decade. These are all questionable statements at best. But if you don't think about that too much, these are all problems that I think most tech enthusiasts would generally agree with, and that's what counts. So when a company comes along and says them out loud, loudly again and again, then they suddenly position themselves as the brand who could potentially solve them. Which brings us to step two, creating a myth. Yep, still no products to be seen anywhere yet. Instead, once he drilled the supposed problems into our heads, Carl then goes on to create a myth, a core abstract idea for how he and his company will be the solution. For OnePlus, it was the idea of a flagship killer. For Nord, it was the return of value phones. And for nothing, it is a phone that will finally become fun again. Again, these are vague concepts on purpose that Carl introduces weeks or even months in advance, and they focus our attention on this core idea, what the problem is, what the solution is, and how this brand fits in between. And at this stage, Carl even lets fans invest in his community. He picks a few as community ambassadors. He invites fans to join their headquarters to show that they're all in this together, and that with their community, this company can defeat the evil industry players. It's a bit like a tribal thing, almost almost like a religion, and at this point he has thousands of enthusiasts rallied around his shared mission. And then, step three, their product. 
Yeah, no, just kidding. Step three is actually just highlights. See, why would a company put out a whole product all at once? That would stop the months-long teasing process that could still happen, and of course it would also mean that the product would get judged on its own as a whole, as a complete package. And it's still too early for that. Instead, the brand first picks out only the elements of their phones that fit this myth that they have just introduced, so people only judge and discuss those in a vacuum, often for weeks before the other details come out, which reinforces the idea that yeah, this product and that myth, they are matched, they have to be. For the OnePlus One, this was a few early specs cherry-picked and released one by one that they teased along with an aggressive price way in advance. Those confirmed the flagship killer myth well ahead of its launch. For the Nord, it was a story told over many months through interviews and documentaries and teasers showing the team struggling to make the right trade-offs to hit low prices. That confirmed the return to value myth without even giving a price away. And for nothing, it's all about the design. They first showed some squiggly lines Lines, then some partial renders, then some full renders, then held a random pop-up event in Switzerland where the phone was behind glass and they invited only a few minor YouTubers so that the videos would almost organically leak all over the internet, and then they gave MKBHD an exclusive video with a selective embargo where he was only allowed to talk about the design. This slow information role gets people to speculate and to create fan renders and to discuss this one feature that they really want to highlight, which again and again confirms the core myth of the phone. At this stage, we can only really see the parts of the product that the company wants us to see, the parts that confirm the myth, so that's what everybody is talking about for weeks. Carl and his companies are no longer the only ones that are following this strategy, and I can see many other brands basically trying to do the same thing as well. Microsoft, for example, famously did a selective embargo for the Surface Duo 2, where the media was only allowed to talk about how the phone looks and feels, not the whole product, which of course created weeks of positive content about how thin and light and beautiful it is and whatever, without really addressing the obvious issues that the phone had, which only came out later. So Carl isn't really alone, but he is somehow more shameless about it, and he just drags it out for way longer, so this window stays open for him to control for way longer. And then, once the differentiation is abundantly clear, comes step four, the actual product launch for real this time. Well, at the recording of this video, which is on a Wednesday evening, the specs of the Nothing Phone haven't actually come out yet, so I can't say this with absolute certainty, but I'd be willing to bet that all the actual details, the specs of this phone, the processor, the cameras, the batteries, the screen, they'll all be using box standard, industry standard components like everybody else does. It's what the OnePlus One did, it's what the OnePlus Nord did, and in earphone terms, it's also what the Nothing Ear Ones did. They were all individually pretty good products and they all did something a little bit different, just enough to make them stand out, but it turns out that unlike what the companies said in step one, the industry is actually doing just fine overall and you don't really need to reinvent the phone or Bluetooth earphones. In fact, Carl's usual strategy is to actually avoid any real product risks. Unlike Microsoft, who tried to reinvent the phone and mostly got hammered when the actual reviews came out, pointing out that their wild ideas often didn't translate to real usability, or unlike Samsung, who tried to make foldable phones work and had some problems along the way, or Sony, who made earbuds with holes in them, etc., or a million other risky products, nothing will take almost no major product risk at all, just like the OnePlus One didn't, and the OnePlus Nord didn't, and the Nothing Ear Ones didn't either, and they will likely release a very standard mid-range phone with some design tweaks that are maybe even pretty cool, and the slightly more aggressive price to make their thing feel fresh. And that's it. Based on their track record, I expect this product to be good, even if it isn't anywhere nearly as groundbreaking as what they were saying they were missing from the industry in step one. But if they were to announce a product just like this without step one, two, and three, I don't think most people would really care about it. I mean, think about it. If another company like Samsung, Vivo, and Xiaomi showed up tomorrow and launched these exact earphones or this exact phone out of nowhere, people would go like, huh, yeah, that's kind of a cool design and maybe even a good price. And then they would likely never think about those again. 
And instead, for the third time already, Carl created a brand that tech enthusiasts at least can't help but care about. It's literally all over my feed. And apart from this general strategy that I've just laid out, there are two more aspects to Carl's companies that make it work in the end. First, Carl and his teams are great entertainers. Their instincts for what info to release and when are perfect, they always have great looking visuals, they are great at making content, and they are intentionally controversial. From making outrageous claims like nobody innovates, which then idiots like me go and make videos about, to Carl literally saying that he loves that their design is polarizing, or even retweeting people who are calling his phone an iPhone copy, Carl and his team keep forcing themselves into every one of our conversations. You can love it or you can hate it, but they are masters of shaping the conversation. And second, while their big launches might not always live up to the astronomical levels of hype that they build initially, they do still usually end up being really nice products with a little bit of extra something that makes them feel special, and they usually also hit that sweet spot in pricing, so you kind of can't really hate them in the end anyway. And in the end, good storytelling combined with a good product and a good price usually wins the day. And I guess that's also why our very own product, Nebula, is so successful as well, with more than 500,000 people having subscribed to it already. It's a damn good service at a great price with great storytelling. See how I made that smooth handover? Nebula is a video streaming service built and won by many of the smartest educational creators you probably already watch, and it has tons of exclusive bonus content from us. I publish full interviews that I make in researching my videos, companion videos where I go deeper into a topic than makes sense here on YouTube, and I also publish a full original series called Technorama, where I break down sci-fi movie tropes with episode 6 coming out in just a few days, by the way. But besides that, Nebula also hosts all of our regular videos from all of us without ads and without any weird tracking, and often even a day or two early. If you want to get more content from me and your favorite creators and you want to support our work, Nebula is the best way to do just that, and it is also incredibly affordable. You can get access to both it and my sponsor CuriosityStream for just 15 bucks for an entire year with my link in the description. That's not a month, but a full year, mind you, and CuriosityStream is, of course, the best place online to watch professional documentaries. Whether you like history, science, nature, or space exploration, you get high-quality documentaries made by professional teams and I've recently finished watching Stephen Hawking's Favorite Places, a documentary narrated by the one and only, well, Steve Hawking, obviously. It was predictably great. Check them out at the link in the description or the button that should be on screen now, I hope, and I'll see you in the next video.